Daf Yomi Tractate Bava Matsya, page seventy four, B, part two. Um, with the words uh, we were asking uh uh Chitema, with the words of Chitema. And if you would say indeed the curse of he who exacted payment never applies to a buyer according to the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, isn't it taught in Abraita that Rabbi Shimon says that even though the sages said that when a party, what one party takes possession of a garment, the other party acquires a gold dinar. But when the party takes possession of a gold dinar, the other party does not acquire a garment. In any case, that is what the halacha would be. But the sages said, with regard to one who withdraws from a transaction, where one party performed an act of acquisition by pulling the gold dinar into his possession, he who exacted payment from the people of the generation of the flood and from the people of the generation of the dispersion and from the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah and from the Egyptians in the Red Sea will in the future exact payment from whoever does not stand by his statement. Rav Papa clarifies, what is the meaning of in any case? Does it not mean that there is no difference whether it is the buyer, and there is no difference whether it is the seller who withdraws from the sale, that either way he accepts upon himself the curse, he who exacted payment. Rather, it must be that when Rabbi Shimon is saying that giving money affects acquisition, he is referring to a case where there was one price, but in the case there were two prices, he did not say it. Rav Acha, the son of Rava, said to Rav Ashi, but let Rav Papa derive this halacha, in the case of dowry employing a more straightforward reasoning. The father-in-law initially made the betrothed man an agent, and since he was an agent, the father-in-law could say to him, I send you to act for my benefit, not to my detriment. Purchasing the jewels at a more expensive price is to the detriment of the father-in-law, and therefore the agency and the sale itself are nullified. Ravashi said to him, it is speaking here about a case where the father-in-law did not actually make him an agent. Rather, the betrothed man was a merchant who buys and sells merchandise. The father-in-law understands that he engages in commerce and that he will not always profit from his trading. I think we'll stop it here. And we'll finish off with part three. And I'm connecting that to the tefillin. Because you look at your tefillin, there's a shin with three prongs and there's one with four and uh so and that's seven and someone told me you should think about the three fathers and the four mothers so i think i'll apply it to this doc today especially the four mothers for mother's day stays jewish